and and look. Calm down and think, H. Maibara. From a certain point of view, isn't it convenient that there was another K. H. Maibara? That's not good, <laughs> because the still fact that you might not have ended up killing him. I buried the corpse perfectly. A beginning wouldn't happen. But if the worst came to worst, and it got out, and the investigation got to me, I now had a strong alibi, able to profess the fact that I had been in the Watanagashi festival. But accepting it, something so creepy, and using it as an alibi. Still, if I proved that I hadn't gone to the festival yesterday, it would be no good and a whole lot of harm. And that was what left was. And that was what left the really, actually bad aftertaste. You'll forget about it, Keiichi Maibara. Everything that happened before today. So just forget about the Keiichi Maibara who was there yesterday, too. Instead, let's watch gently over Satoko for the day her smile returns. In the day, that would mark the end of the insane all-too-long night. I'm so fucking confused. Feels like my brain just had a fucking C4 detonated inside of it. I'm so fucking confused. What's going on? That's all for class today. Please go straight back to your homes, everyone. Preston, if you would. Everybody, stand up at attention. Bow. Goodbye. I thought about many things and saw my thoughts dispersed by many other things. I didn't know whether or not the time had been set, spent worrying or daydreaming, but either way, it came to an end along with the class. Cheerfully, our classmates got their things and ran for the hallway. Mio and Rena and, the, and Rico were packing up as well. What about Satoko? This whole day, she seemed deflated. Well, her uncle may not have returned last night, but she wouldn't have known he'd, he'd never returned. How much I wanted to express that fact to her. Satoko packed up her pencil box and math workbook messily, and after a dark glance at the clock, heaved a sigh. Then went to leave the classroom. Then suddenly, somebody placed a hand on her shoulder and stopped her. What is it? I watered the plants like I was supposed to and got all the printouts done. Her words possessed by a persecution complex hurt. I spoke loudly so everybody could hear. Hey everyone, why don't why don't we have a club today? It's been a while. Satsuko's always had to tend to her uncle, so club had been on hiatus. In our minds our club was proof of a calm, peaceful life. By enjoy by enjoying being together, I wanted to make Satoko realize her days of darkness were over. I'm okay, I'll do it. Me Well I mean I don't mind, if it's okay with Satoko. Under a condition, that was important. With everything up to her, Satoko gave a worried look. Yeah, she's not doing it. Come on, Satoko, it's been a long time. Let's go crazy. Let's fucking lose it. Well, I'm happy you feel that way, but... My uncle might already be home. Thus spoke her darkened eyes, her mouth unmoving. You've been choking on life every day for a while. You must be about to suffocate. It's no good for your mind or body. Once in a while, you've got to have some fun. Please, leave it alone. It's not like I don't want to do club again. With one word, but... She looked down. Satoko, you know as well as anybody that it's more fun being with everyone, right? We're friends. That means we can spend time with each other. I mean, you had a great time at the festival yesterday with everyone, didn't you? Rena nearly said something, but she was too late. Keiichi, what are you saying? Marum on her shoulder seemed to weigh her down, and she threw it off. When exactly was I playing and having fun at the festival? The only one having fun was you, Keiichi. Huh? I looked over to Mion for help, but now everyone was looking down. Ah. Oh. Ooh, fuck. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's awkward. That's awkward. That's really awkward. My instincts told me. I fucked up. That Satoko hadn't gone to the festival. But Rena said it herself. That she went with Mio to Satoko's house to invite her. Doesn't mean she accepted it. Satoko left on the way there. 
she didn't go to the shrine. Wh why I realized the absurdity of what I had just said with Satoko in front of me. She said her uncle was waiting at home and she couldn't have fun by herself. When we were in front of the shrine. Wh we tried to stop her too. We told her her uncle said it was okay and that he wouldn't get mad at if she had a good time. At some points, tears had begun welling up in Zatoka's eyes. Zatoka was so afraid of her uncle that she couldn't even allow herself time with her friends and went home. No, she was even afraid of letting herself have a good time with her friends. Keiichi, you must have had it nice. Having a blast at the festival all night. They told me you went all out, didn't you? Very envious. Smiling to herself, her tears began to fall. Oh my god. This is sad. This is sad. You're... I still don't like Satoko as a character that much. Oh no, she gets annoying, but god, this is sad. It is really fucking sad. I must provide for my uncle. It's completely different from you. Without you, let your parents do everything. Satoko. I'm so glad you enjoyed yourself at the festival. I'm so glad you have enough fun for me, too. I, I mean, I want to participate in the club, too. Making such a racket with everyone is so much fun. But right now, I, I can't. I can't. Unable to withstand such a violent emotion, a few teardrops slid down her cheek. But even though she was having such a terrible time, not once did she ever say that it was hard for her. It was sad. Obstinate bravery. But the days when Sotoko had to feel like that were over. Sotoko didn't need to, to endure it, to bear it anymore. She could forget all about it now and smile. I was so frustrated at not being able to tell her that directly. Instead, I said something that I'm not sure I should have said before I thought about it twice. Ooh, I'm gonna love reading this. Let me guess, your uncle's not, he's not a problem anymore. Something stupid like that. He didn't. Come home, did he? The words were deeply meaningful to me, but I didn't know if Satoko understood them. Rip. Didn't come home? Who? He didn't come home last night, did he? Your uncle. He fucking did, didn't he? He, he fucking did, didn't he? What are you talking about, Keiichi? Satoko shouted with all her might. When has he not been there? When? When? Calm down. I mean, he didn't come home yesterday, did he? I don't understand what you're trying to say, Keiichi. Satoko, what are you talking about? I mean, that man, I... I killed him. Killed him yesterday. He didn't fucking kill him. It was all fucking delusion. It was all... Fake. It was all a hallucination. He didn't do it. I guarantee if he looks for that bad, it will be there. That will be the proof that he didn't do it. He didn't come here. It was all in his mind. Killed him for sure. And that's why he had such a good time at the festival. Because he was imagining killing him. Like his mind was wandering in that idea of killing someone. And that's why he was happy. But he didn't really do it. At least that's my theory at this point. Because I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to end up being. Either that or he's fucking insane I mean I've had that experience where you're like you're just so focused on something else you don't even realize you're doing stuff and I buried him buried him whole he could never have returned to his house even yesterday he was torturing me so much he yelled at me he shouted at me he found fault with everything I did he threw the dinner I made him on the floor he dumped his bowl of miso soup on me, too. It was hot. It was messy. And I cleaned all of it up. I cleaned all of it. <laughs> what? Our stories weren't matching up. He... But... Night? In this morning, when he woke up to make me breakfast, he got so mad at me. He would have gotten mad at me whether I had gotten up or not. <laughs> Satoko. Rico went over to Satoko and said a few words of consolation. You fucked up. You didn't fucking kill him. You didn't do anything. And you just fucking sent her off. Oh, I hope Mion yells at him. 
saying, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> because he deserves that, just slaps his shit out of it. But Satoko angrily refused the words and thrust Rika away. Teeny, Nini, come back, come back. <laughs> Crying, Satoko slowly walked out into the hallway. You really fucked that up. After a moment, R Rika went after her. I couldn't stop thinking about the words Satoko had spoken while crying. I buried her uncle last night, but she said this morning that was impossible. I buried him last night, so she couldn't have seen her uncle this morning. But what, what was Satoko... At that point, I heard Mion's cold voice. Oh, thank God. You're a fucking idiot. Please do it. Hey, Keichan, what did you mean? About Satoko's uncle? Ooh... You can't slip anything faster. I was really hoping she'd just slap the shit out of you and say, You're an idiot. But that would make me too happy, I guess. Gulp. I said too much. I let my emotions get the better of me. Frenna heard it too. He said Santico's uncle didn't come home. Why? Why didn't he come home? Mmm. That's strange. Santico's uncle was right there this morning, wasn't he? So why would you say he didn't come back? Come back. Hmm, okay, John, you've been saying weird things for a while. Suddenly, Mion and Rena started to speak in strange and creepy voices. Hmm, hmm, what were they doing? What were they saying? Okay, John, it isn't somehow inconvenient for you for Satko's uncle to be around? You, no, what are you talking about? Of course it would be better if Satko's uncle wasn't here. Yep, that's true, of course, if only he wasn't here, right? <laughs> okay, nope, nope. Can it not go back down the same path like last time? Then I gotta see those creepy eyes? Nope. Ugh. Something, something wasn't right. The next thing I knew, Mion and Reno were smiling thinly, and their eyes were dark and muddy in a way that I had never seen before. And as our eyes met, that mud even seemed to fill the air. Satoko Uncle is an awful person, no doubt. I think we'd all be better off with him just gone just as much as you do. But he's here. There's nothing we can do. Right? Nothing we can do? Something's wrong. Something's clearly wrong here. What the hell was happening? After a moment, a chilly liquid-like feeling as though my blood had been mixed with sherbet crawled up my spine. This is when you back up and leave. Oh, God. No choice. I mean, of course there isn't, but... But then Satoko will never... If there's no choice, what would you do? Rano was trying to prompt me to say more. There really was no choice, so I killed him. I killed him to protect Satoko. That's... Mmm... Leave him alone. I think that things will resolve themselves soon enough. Santago said her uncle was here, so he's here. He was here yesterday, and he's here today. She said so, and so it's fine, right? Right? Mion and Reno were speaking unbelievably dismissively. How could they be talking like that? God. They fucking know everything. Everything. It's fucking crazy. Mion and Rena were they were all my friends and were seriously worried about Satoko's abuse, weren't they? I mean this is this is fucking dripping me out, man. I'm getting fucking confused as shit. They would never blurt out something like this. And I definitely killed Satoko's uncle. No matter what Satoko or anyone else says, I wouldn't acknowledge it because him being alive was impossible. There's no way he was alive. It was impossible. And yet, since Satoko herself said he was the here, then he was alive. This is fucking, this is fucking me up right now. Like, legitimately, this is insane. 
I didn't know why or how, but suddenly Mion and Rena were at my side, standing there silently. Oh, fuck me. Ugh. Rena, can you please back up? Let's go home, Kei-chan. Sure, I, I love to. After we leave, Rena wants to go treasure hunting for the first time in a while. Kei-chan is coming too. Uh... Kei-chan, you should come along. Of course you're not allowed to refuse. If words could freeze blood, I'd be frozen solid. Then there was no doubt that they would have frozen me solid. Hey, look. What a surprise. I could hear it in a thin layer of ice, the sound of all my muscles tensing. And with them closely at my sides, we left the school as if we were if they were police officers taking me away. This is fun. They talked about silly things the entire way home, like they always did. But they always stood at my side, so as it as if to prevent me from escaping. This was strange. Everything about this day was strange. Actually, it had been strange ever since the previous night. Yeah, thinking back, it had been strange ever since killing Santoko's uncle. The creepy meeting with Takano was only the beginning. The insane night was still continuing. Yeah, it still hadn't ended. What? What's wrong, Keichan? Why did you suddenly stop? Uh, sorry, it's nothing. When I stopped, it was distant, but I definitely heard them fucking footsteps. An extra set of footsteps. That was proof. Proof that insane night hadn't ended. Seattle, <laughs> all I'd say is, yeah, can we do this without Rena? Straight up, that's what I would say. I, I don't care. I would try it. It's worth the try. Mion left where she usually did, and finally, we came to my house. Okay, Keiichi. Wait here for me. Rena will come to pick you up soon. What was it? She was inviting me along one of her oversi her oversized garbage treasure hunts at the dam site, right? But why now? Mion coming along was strange, too. Mion may have accepted Rena's little hobby, but she hated fishing through garbage, so she'd never come along with her before. See, that's what... See, that's good. Accepting, but not just completely saying, yeah, I'm not fucking doing that. That's what... That's good. I like that. And the location specifically being the dam site was a little creepy. I'm gonna fucking die. The dam construction site was completely outside the flow of everyday life. It was so remote that no one ever went there unless they thought it to... Good God. It was so remote that no one ever thought... No one ever went there unless they thought to in particular. Good fucking god. It's such an awkward sentence. Ugh, I, I don't know. I hate that sentence structure right there. It's so remote that no one ever went there unless they wanted to. I would have just changed it to that. Unless they wanted to. Or they on purposely... Unless they deliberately wanted to. Nobody lived there and no... And there were no lights, so at night it got dark very quickly. I was being forcibly invited there. There was no reason I had to fear Rena and Mion. He's gonna fucking try to kill- I swear to god, if he kills them, I will be so depressed. Well, I'll be depressed if he kills Mion. That's when I'll be depressed. Besides, wouldn't the trouble I'd make by refusing them be a pain to deal with? In that way, it didn't seem like going treasure hunting with them was a bad idea. Yeah, it's a bad idea. But that insane night was continuing. Haven't the sirens of instinct, instinct been wailing in my mind for a while now? Warning me that Ren and Mion were rather strange. Now I needed to be cautious. The warning sirens were so freaking loud it felt like my head would split in two. That's called survival. survival. Oh, Rena. I I actually have something to do. Too bad. <laughs> something to do. Like what? Like what? It's I just have something to do, okay? If you had something to do, why didn't you say it while Michan was here? Harry told her to meet us at the dam site before we split up. Rena was smiling, but her words made her discomfort clear. Sorry. I just kind of missed the opportunity to say so. Really? You're lying, aren't you? You just made that up now, you liar. That's what Rena's eyes said to me. Oh, my, my, uh, head hurts. I might have a cold. 
so I wanted to get it checked out and get some medicine. Really? That wasn't really a lie. My head did hurt a little bit, so I wasn't lying. Rena, she couldn't figure out if my head hurt or not just by looking at it. Then, I guess that's that. After staring me in the eyes for a few moments, she fired a sharp needle-like stare at me. Ugh. Then the tension in my body loosened, and I felt like my knees might buckle. If you're going to the clinic, then you should go soon. Sometimes they close early. Thanks. I'll do that. Make sure you go, okay? To the hospital. I will. Go for real. I will. Seemed like Rena had realized I was going to refuse her invitation for a while now. With how serious she looked, she might actually call the clinic later to make sure I went. I couldn't say anything careless. Lying about getting checked out was just an excuse to decline her request in the first place. It didn't matter whether I actually went. Yeah, I'll go. If you want, I can bring you the bill tomorrow. Yes, do that. Oh, that would be good. Be sure to bring it, okay? Rena, lo Rena will look at it then. Fuck. That's a... Uh, mmm. Mmm. No. No. Another tingle started crawling up my back. Yeah, fuck that shit. There was no ignoring it. Rena and Mio must have been monitoring my movements. Well, that wasn't normal. Far from it. All of it was insane. I did what I did because I wanted my peaceful life back, but what, what on earth was all this? It was far from peaceful. Something had gone mad, leaving the world out of order. Oh no, I probably would have just said fuck it. Eh. I'm insane anyways. I mean, I'm hearing footsteps. I might as well go to the dam. Fuck it. What's the worst that can happen? I die. Screw it. Eh. With the other cage you might borrow. With those creepy footsteps I've been hearing. With Rena and Mion acting so curious. And above all, with him being alive. Where was I? Hinami's all a village, Shishibo. I knew that much. Was this really Hinami's, the Hinamizawa I knew? Hey, Keiichi Mayabara, where is this? I asked, whipping around before the foot front door to face the one who had been following in my wake all day. Nobody would have been there, of course. Keiichi Mayabara, huh? That's why I just called him. Called the one who had been tra trailing behind me this whole time. That shadowy presence always clinging to me, like it was constantly watching for the opportunity to change places. Footsteps always following me was another impossibility. It couldn't have been a ghost, so it was just impossible. So the strangeness must have been my ears, my head, or Hinamizawa. Everything I could see was the same exact Hinamizawa I knew so well, and that gave me the creeps. Time to go to the hospital, dude. Because you need a fucking head check. You need a psyche valve. 24 hour wait, period. Not 48 hour. Eventually, I decided to actually go to the clinic. I really didn't want to go outside, but a stronger feeling than that desire was the fear Rena might actually be keeping an eye on me to see if I went to the hospital. I don't trust Rena at all. But before I went to the clinic, there was something I wanted to make sure of. It was at school. I pre pretended I forgot something, and was going back to the classroom to pick it up. The fucking baseball bat. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, I was overwhelmed by paranoia. I was just going to the classroom, but I hated it so much having to be so careful to fake it. After carefully verifying once more that nobody was watching, I went over to the locker. Yeah, Satoshi's a locker. I committed the crime with the bat I found in this locker, Satoshi's bat. And then I had thrown the bat into the swamp, which meant the bat shouldn't have been inside. But, but, what if? The bat was still in here. It was a very dreadful, incomprehensible idea, but if it was true, it would explain a lot. If the bat was in here, yesterday's events would have all been a delusion. No, an illusion. I hadn't killed anyone and I had gone to the festival. I had a great time ra 
rampaging about with everyone. It would prove that Keiichi Mayabara was really me. Proof that I was under, only under some strange assumption that I had actually that I had killed Satoko's uncle. Proof that it had been a wild fantasy. That would explain everything. Nothing happened yesterday. I had just gone mad, unable to separate my shocking uncle killing dream from reality. That would explain everything. If the bat was here, would I be able to accept that reality? Probably not. You would go insane. If it was here, nothing will have changed. If it was here, it would just mean I had gone crazy. Preparing myself for the worst, I opened the locker door. I was actually scared of opening it slowly, so I threw it open with a bang. Huh. And just like the first time, the choking scent of smell and sweat like a stale towel come fo flowing out, came flowing out. It was a baseball uniform and some miscellaneous other things like notebooks. There was also a shoe pouch. And as for the bat, it wasn't here. What the fuck? Oh, what? Oh. Check next to the the thingy thingy. The construction thingy. Fuck it. I don't fucking know what he called it. Just the machine. The construction machine's outside. See if it's still propped up there. If not, then what the fuck? What is going on? What? Oh, this is the most confused I've ever fucking been in a game. It was how I left it when I took it the bat out. There was no doubt yesterday really happened. What the fuck? Now that I knew I wasn't a lunatic, I felt relieved. But at the same time, if I wasn't the crazy one, then Hinamizawa was. And that was evidence of a reality I'd found just as difficult to accept. There was a noise somehow creeping into everything I saw. And the world was losing a tiny bit of color. So what did I know about last night now? Now that I had sure the bat wasn't there, I didn't needed to do I didn't need to be here anymore. You need to look at the area where the shovel was, if the shovel and hole is still there. Check the machine. Check Satoko's house for his uncle's bike. There's a lot of things you need to check. Because at what time? Because that was two nights ago that you took the bat out. Not last night. So there's a point along this window that his time stopped. And then there's a, f a blank space. Now, what, there's two diverging paths, but they all lit, led up to one single point, and what that one point was, I don't know what it is. That's what's important. Shall I go? For real, to the hospital. I need help. It was my first time going to the hospital. From what I'd heard, it wasn't far from school. My mom had told me where it was. A big, easy-to-see road went straight there. I went past the shopping street, made a turn. It wasn't overly hard to spot the sign with Ire Clin Clinic on it. There was one other person, an older man there, in the air-conditioned waiting room. I went up to the counter and told them it was my first time here. The man behind the counter glanced at the clock and said there would be a short wait. It was almost five. Clinic hours would be ending soon. As I sat in this unfamiliar waiting room, isolated from everyone, and let myself feel the cold, cool air, I actually felt relieved. What should I tell the doctor when he comes in? I could tell him I had a cold, and but I was the very I was the very picture of health. Actually, I wanted him to check my head. I wanted to set for someone to confirm for me whether I was really sane or not. Gechi Mayabara, please come into the examination room. Huh? A voice from the other side of the examination curtain. I thought I'd heard it somewhere before. Yeah, it's the coach. Because he said it's Dr. Ire. And this is Ire's clinic, so it's obviously him. Fuck, even I figured that out. Come on. At least she called him Doctor. Or what's his face? Sadka's uncle called him that. One of them called him Doctor. Hey, coach. 